What is up guys, and welcome back to the channel. Here we've got the H22 engine that we extracted from the wrecked Honda Prelude a few months back. We're gonna go ahead and get started on getting this motor prepared before we can go ahead and mount the five-speed transmission in place. But first, we need to go ahead and take a trip to the salvage yards and pick up a few parts for Project CB9. So let's go ahead and get started. Nineteen ninety two Burgundy Coupe. Light gray interior. Hundred and eight thousand miles. Man, that is low. That's a shame. It's one of the lowest miles I've seen in the yard. Nineteen ninety two. EX wagon. Surprisingly, this is a five speed. Usually, five speeds are in LX models. It's like rust is starting to take over this vehicle on the quarters. People smashing out windows. Looking at this taillight, I was going to grab this, but it's starting to crack right there. So I'll just uh, wait another day to find a better taillight. But what I am going to grab is I'm going to pull off this fender liner. I'm going to grab that grommet. It leads from the windshield washer reservoir into the A-pillar because I had a crack on mine, I had to patch it, so I'll let you get a spare part for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this fender liner and grab it. Okay, we just got done pulling some parts off the CB9, some miscellaneous trim and whatnot. Came across this 95 Accord and turns out to be stick shift with 178,000 miles. Not too bad, but we would have the starter that I need. Taking a closer look, it's a remanufactured starter, so it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab the starter. It saves me a lot of headache of searching all these cars in the yard. So apparently 1990 through 2002 Accords are all compatible for mounting on the transmissions. So let's go ahead and pull the starter. Okay guys, a little junkyard tip here. We came unprepared like I did. Only brought a 3 8 ratchet. Anyways, there was one 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the starter. I couldn't get the leverage, being how short this ratchet is. Went ahead and found this folding lug wrench on the ground and slid the 3 8 ratchet in there, which gave me an extra 16 inches of leverage. I was able to break that 17 millimeter free, which was on there very tight. There was no way I'd be able to break it with this 3 8 ratchet. So just a little word of advice. Nineteen ninety-two Honda Accord LX engine hoist is already in position, and someone has already grabbed the engine and transmission on this one. Door panels are leather now. This is interesting. It looks like these are aftermarket leather door inserts. As you can see, the factory cloth inserts behind here. So this may have been an aftermarket supplier back in the day, because the LX is not really known for leather interior. Someone's already grabbed a lot of parts off this one, but we'll keep seeing what's here in the yard. Now this is a bright colored 5 Series right here. And this is actually painted, not wrapped. That's pretty crazy. Wow. Friend and neighbor has a 99 Acura TL, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these taillights for him. 
These are off in 02, 03. So this has the all clear and red taillights, which will change out the orange and red from the 99 to 01. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. 1990 white sedan. Red interior, can't use any of that stuff. Looks like someone had some custom sounds in the trunk there. Took it with them, of course, or the yard grabbed them. Not gonna believe what I found. Found a high-end Alpine CD player from back in the day. This has got the BBE in there. The faceplate was actually on the floor. The body of the radio was actually in the dashboard somewhat, but I was able to dig through the car and I found the trim ring, I found the faceplate, it clicks into place, and found obviously the body of the radio. So I think these are $30, but this is not a bad find right here. So you just don't know what you're gonna find in cars with previous systems in there. So this one had an old school 1999 Alpine CD player. So we're definitely gonna grab this thing. Okay, we're gonna start working on H22 here. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove this bottom portion of the exhaust header. It has been cut when it was at the junkyard with the motor getting extracted. On top of that, it probably will not fit the CB9 exhaust. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Second thing, we're gonna move this water outlet piece right here. The CB9 actually has a sensor on the side, so we need that sensor because that plugs into the factory harness on the uh, CB9 engine harness. And uh, next thing is this wiring harness for the Honda Prelude. This is totally different from the CB9. It has different electrical connectors, so we will not need this harness on this engine. We're gonna have to swap on the CB9 harness, but there will be a few connectors, I believe, that we have to solder and tap onto the CB9 harness. So we will not discard this harness just yet because there might be some different sensors. Also, there might be some sensors on the F22 engine. We might have to swap into this H22 for simplicity purposes. So let's go ahead and start prepping this H22 here. Okay guys, change of plans, remove the entire exhaust header from the H22. I was trying to separate the top from the bottom first. However, this one bolt that holds on the bottom portion, top portion, looked like there was some type of damage of some sort. It's like a slice in the bolt. Couldn't get my 12 millimeter on there to save my life, but anyhow, so I just decided to remove the entire header. And you can see two of the studs came out with the bolts themselves. But that's okay. We did not snap any bolts 
or any studs. So we're good to go on that part. Just had to spray them for a little bit of lubrication with all the heat cycles and the rust that accumulates on these exhaust components. But H22 exhaust header is officially off. Now we can start on getting the wiring harness removed and the water outlet assembly here removed. So we're making some progress here. Alrighty guys, today we're gonna to take the engine wiring harness off of the H22 project. We're gonna start here from the front, take these wires off here and then work our way back. And then hopefully we'll be able to take this harness off with ease. So let's go ahead and get this engine harness taken off. Okay, and this is the H22 engine harness that was removed from the motor. I didn't go into specific details of how this was removed, but for the most part, 90% of this is basically connectors. So you'll see here on the connector right here, there's got a little tab, and you basically push down on this and you're able to pull it right out. So it's basically how 90% of this engine harness is set into place. And there's a random, you know, ground wire right there, probably a 10 millimeter bolt. And then this is how it hooks up to the body harness itself right there. And this goes into the fuse box, 10 millimeter also. And I believe there is a few connectors we're gonna be using from this harness. And I believe these two right here are for the VTEC solenoid. So we're gonna cut those off. And that's how we're gonna wire up the VTEC solenoid, the green and the gray right here. I believe there's one more I might be forgetting. So essentially that's how a engine wiring harness comes off. You just gotta take your time and pull the connectors off, take the grounds off. And there's also maybe some clips right here that holds it in place. So you can take a screwdriver, kind of push these things in, or maybe even a pry tool and slip it in there and remove it. But there's only a few of those. And then this is a connector that pulls straight out. And then with the alternator itself, and the alternator connector is obviously different. So we're gonna, obviously gonna use the F22 alternator on this engine. And then this comes apart with a 10 millimeter. And we'll be reusing this plastic little holder thing. This goes on top of the valve cover. So when we get the F22 harness in position, we'll go ahead and take this off and tape it and attach it in position. So that's essentially an engine harness removed. So do not discard this until we're done with this project because there's gonna be a few connectors that we need from this harness. All right, so the distributor and external coil on this H22 is not gonna work for application since this is an OBD2 setup. So we're gonna take off the distributor, take off this external coil, and we're gonna buy a OBD1 distributor and we're going to transfer over the F22 external coil since that'll work. So let's go ahead, remove these two items from the engine.
We're going to start off and replace the water neck outlet from the F22 and transfer this over to the H22 engine. The reason for that is this sensor right here is not included on the H22 engine. So we need that sensor to connect to our F22 harness. And then while we're doing so, go ahead and take this gasket out and replace it with the gasket. There's the part number for your reference. And once the gasket is in position, we'll go ahead and take these two 12 millimeter bolts and install it on the engine. Okay, this is the VTEC solenoid valve timing electronic lift control. This engine obviously has it and the F22 does not. But anyhow, as you can see, there's some oily residue leaking below this. So we're gonna go ahead and take the three 10 millimeter bolts off right here, here, and right here. We'll go ahead and get this all cleaned up and then we'll replace the seals on this VTEC solenoid. Here's the VTEC solenoid that's been removed from the H22. And as you can see here, I've got a lot of accumulation of what looks to be like metal shavings. This is basically a metal screen that's built into this special gasket right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this old gasket off, replace with a new one. Here's a new gasket for those that wanna have the part number for reference. There's also a smaller gasket on the top of this unit. And here's the part number for that reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these three 10 millimeter bolts off. And this part will separate from the main unit, which will then expose the other gasket. So let's go ahead and get this fully taken apart. Happiness, is it truly meant to last forever? Dreams could come true till you walked into my life Like wings beneath the wind, you lift me Shelter. Like the sun needs its stars, you make my world shine. 
All right, guys, that's all the time we've got for today's episode. We we're able to get a lot accomplished on this H22 preparation. In addition to removing the exhaust header and the VTEC solenoid and replacing the seal, along with going to the salvage yard and finally finding a starter for our system. Now we've got a lot more to go on this H22, including the going on the backside, doing the modifications, the intake manifold, the timing components, valve cover, oil pan seal, rear man seal, and then last but not least, mounting the five speed position. Hope you guys can tune along as we get further along this build. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.